So I was reading an article in The Guardian and it was about the UK proposition to effectively ban hybrid cats. Well, now that's really interesting. Little sparks started flying out of my head that I had to somehow contain. So now I wanna catch you up. If you don't know what a hybrid is, it is the mixing of a domestic cat, you know, domestic house cat, <laughs> that big, and an exotic or wild cat. And then they're mixed and they're called a breed and now we have a hybrid cat. So the most popular that you might know about is a Bengal. And a Bengal originally was the mix between an Asiatic leopard cat and a domestic cat. The one that's really coming on in popularity over the past 15 or so years is the Savannah. And the Savannah was one of the things that the UK was like, yeah, this is starting to worry us. And not just the government, they were really appalled by the rise in popularity, especially of Savannah's in social media. Then there was the Kurt Zuma thing. And if you don't know about that, check out all of my TikTok videos about Kurt Zuma, the soccer player who was filmed kicking his cat around his house and now disgraced soccer player. But that cat was a Bengal. And that did get people looking at Bengals again and again, that started setting off alarm. So that's why this whole thing started. I just want to take you through my thought process and, and where my head went and where I ended up because you might be thinking the same thing. So the first thing I thought was, yeah, that's not smart. I, I wouldn't just ban these cats outright. When you enact these kind of bans is you just drive people underground. It'll still happen. It just will be happening a little more off the grid, and that's not good for anybody. When the conversation was happening in, in the US about mandating spay neuter uh, in cities, you had to have your cat spayed or, or your dog spayed or neutered. But what that means is that once you enact that, you are then putting the onus on a population of people who might not be able to afford spay and neuter and not know that there are resources and then they get scared. Now they're hiding their unspayed animals from animal control and anybody else, but they're not gonna get their animal spayed and neutered. But you see where I'm going with that. You mandate certain things and these things get forced underground. All right, so that was my first thought. The proposed change is still a thing in flux, and I think trying to flesh it out has been a little confusing, at least to me. Uh, it's not calling for an outright ban. What it's trying to do is it's trying to get these animals that are considered exotic or exotic hybrids, right now you can license them, and then we're just gonna change the licensing law so they can't be licensed. That only applies to uh, cats that are F1s, and F1 means filial one. What that means is that the cat that you have right here is a direct descendant of, it, let's say it's the Savannah. You know, dad was a serval, mom was a domestic cat. There's your F1. So in the UK, from the way I'm reading it right now, the ban would only be on F1s because it would be impossible to license them. So, okay, things are starting to get a little more solidified for me. I'm starting to think about this in a more sort of pragmatic way, putting my thoughts together. The gears are turning in this little cartoony brain of mine. Hmm. Okay, I have a lot of experience with hybrids. As a matter of fact, I joke about this a lot, that if it weren't for, you know, everything from Bengals to Savannahs to Pixie Bobs and beyond, I wouldn't have a job, you know? They, 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 I don't, just saying. But why? The reason is, and especially as these guys get higher up the filial chain, F1, F2, F3, even F4s in my experience, they're wild cats. They have wild tendencies. There's also the prey drive, especially as you get more wild. And if they decide that your ankle is a mouse, well, basically your ankle is a mouse at that point. That's about where that is. Peeing. Territorial marking, even after they're spayed and neutered, man, they will hit things, especially if they feel territorially threatened. There was an episode of, of My Cat from Hell. It was all about this guy, and he wanted something wild in his house. He, he bought two uh, F, one was an F1, one was an F2, Savannahs. 
I had the pleasure of dealing, or the dubious distinction of having to work with both of them. One of them was just like a feral wildcat. Like he just didn't want to be anywhere in a room. You always had to look for him even though he was 20 pounds. And then there was the other one. And that one was an F1. I, I mean, it was a her, it was a female, but man, I have been around a lot of cats. You guys know that 30 years, man, tens of thousands of cats I have worked with over the years. I have never been scared. And that's that cat scared the out of me. That's the sort of pitfalls of bringing a wild cat and mating with a domestic. So that's my experience in my work. So one of the proponents of this change in law is Wild Heart Trust. And really they're about sort of protecting exotic animals first and foremost. And they brought up a really important point that, that I had to start thinking about, which was I was so caught up in behavior and money and all that, I didn't think about this. For every F1 Savannah, there's a serval. There's a serval in captivity forced to breed with domestic cats, never mind the domestic cats, to churn out these F1s. The same thing goes for everything from an Asiatic leopard cat, a bobcat, a margay, a jaggerundi, whatever breed that you want to think of, there is those exotic wild animals that are in captivity for one reason and one reason alone. From a welfare standpoint, that's just pretty horrific when I think about it. So that was another point. And by the way, if we're talking about all that, why aren't we talking about the fact that this, an F1 or even an F2, how is that not part of this sort of exotic animal trade that we've been railing against over the past however many years? Everybody watched Tiger King, me included, railing against these roadside zoos and the exotic wild cat trade. How is this not part of that? How is having a captive jaggerundi breeding it with a d domestic cat, how is that not part of the exotic animal trade? I mean, we have to start thinking about what our social responsibility here is, and right now, that's flouting social responsibility. If you just make that tiny little jump from a jaggerundi being used for the satisfaction of a consumer who wants a wild cat in their house that's gonna have 20,000, 80,000, 800,000 followers, and going to a roadside zoo to see a captive Siberian tiger who will roar for your entertainment and allow Tiger Joe to put his head, you know, it's not that far off. And one of the things that really bugs me is this. With this boom in, in, in the actual demand for these exotic cats, these hybrids, comes with it not only the fact that people are, are ready to spend, just hold on to your seatbelts for a second, $20,000 and up for an F1 or F2 kitten, but whether they're F1s, F2s, F3s, whatever, we're creating a lot of cats. And let's not forget that we have upwards to a million that are killed every year in shelters. And that's just in the US. I don't even know the numbers around the world. So now it's just, uh, we're just creating cats. And that as a society at this point in the game, if we have any empathy for these cats, is the very last thing that we should be doing. The last thing. So there's that. So then there's the thing that really finally tipped me over in terms of any initial hesitation I had about banning outright. But it's not about banning every Bengal or Savannah or whatever that already exists out there that they're so far down the bloodline. Now Bengals are just breeding with other Bengals. The leopard cat has nothing to do with it anymore. We're not banning those. It's more specific to the F1s and potentially F2s, but really F1s. That the exotic in captivity, very hard to license, and the direct descendant, very hard, if not impossible, both of them to license. That's the ban. So that means we are cutting off the problem at the genesis point. Now that makes sense to me. If you aren't allowing the licensing of these exotic animals and their direct offspring, 
Well, then you won't have the F4, F5, F6 a couple of years, if not less, down the road. And all these other kittens and all these other sort of status cats because you're cutting it off at the top. But I would like to say this to any of you out there who are thinking of buying an exotic hybrid. Then I would tell you, please go to a rescue because these cats People think about them, they think about the looks, they think about this, whatever reason, the followers that they might get, and they get them, but they haven't been educated. They just turn them over to a rescue. So there are plenty of these Savannah rescues, Bengal rescues, uh, that have these cats for adoption so that you don't have to pay all that money. And they also educate you a little better sometimes than you might have been. So, with all these points in mind, I say, heck yeah, let's do it. Let's, let's see what happens. I mean, I think it's a, it's a really noble thing to try and do, is to curtail the hybrid population um, and just stop this crazy fascination with bringing wild into our homes. You know, I wanna know what you think. I wanna know what you think. I mean, I'm sure that there's plenty of you guys out there that have Bengals and Savannahs and, and, and Pixie Bobs and, and you're not gonna be happy with me, but I do wanna hear about it. I wanna hear what you have to say and, uh, and we'll talk about it some more. And you know why we can have these conversations? Because you subscribe to this channel, because subscribers help make this channel tick. So do me a favor, subscribe, hit the button, a little like, uh, and keep coming back. Let me know what you think in the comments and I will see you very soon. All light, all love, all mojo to you. Yeah.